One of the major challenges in cardiovascular laboratory medicine revolves around acute coronary syndromes. Although acute coronary syndrome constitutes a continuum, it is usually divided into non-ST elevation myocardial infarction, or NSTEMI, and ST elevation myocardial infarction, or STEMI, based upon electrocardiogram changes at, at, changes at patient presentation. Patients with unstable angina are also classified into the acute coronary syndrome definition and present with chest pain or other symptoms without electrocardiogram changes or evidence of myocardial necrosis. Annual statistics estimate there are 610,000 new and 325,000 recurrent acute myocardial infarctions with 6 million visits to emergency rooms across the United States. A smaller percentage, approximately 2 to 5 percent, of myocardial infarctions are missed in the emergency room. Mortality rates for patients over 40 years of age are high, 20 percent within the first year following an MI, and 30 to 40 percent within the next five years. Notably, the mortality rate is also higher for females than males. The diagnostic challenge relies on clearly differentiating patients who do have an acute myocardial infarction from those who have not and can be sent home. Furthermore, situations are often not black and white and decisions are often needed about what to do with patients who have slightly elevated troponins but aren't changing. The cardiac troponin complex consists of three regulatory proteins, troponin C, I, and T, that control the calcium-mediated interaction of actin and myosin. Troponin C exhibits no cardiac specificity and therefore cannot be used as a biomarker of necrosis. Both troponin I and T have cytosolic and structural pools, with most existing in the structural pool. Troponin I and T are both structural biomarkers of cardiac necrosis and exhibit exquisite myocardial specificity. Presently, most laboratories run a troponin assay, either troponin T or troponin I, and may also offer testing for CKMB and or myoglobin. Troponin demonstrates improved myocardial specificity and sensitivity over both CKMB and myoglobin and essentially obsoletes the utility of either marker. Cardiac troponin is the best marker for definitive diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction. Troponins appear in the serum relatively early after the onset of symptoms and remain abnormal for 4 to 10 days. Elevations of troponin T persist longer than troponin I because it is larger, at 37 kilodaltons versus 24 kilodaltons. An increase in troponin may also be seen following unstable angina or a small, myocardi small myocardial infarction, and in both situations, the troponin concentration would be above the 99th percentile. In 2007, a universal definition of MI was established to improve the accuracy of myocardial infarction diagnosis. Updates, updates to this definition maintain cardiac troponin as the preferred biomarker of myocardial necrosis, which it has been for the past decade. However, at that time, it was recognized that more sensitive troponin assays were detecting other etiologies of both acute and chronic troponin elevations and therefore, additional emphasis was placed on observing a rise and or fall of cardiac troponin above the 99th percentile. At least one of those troponin concentrations should be above the 99th percentile of the assay, and there also needs to be evidence of myocardial ischemia, being symptoms, ECG changes, pathological Q waves, or imaging evidence. The timing of samples remains critical and serial testing is recommended for interpretation. Based on evidence that even small amounts of troponin reflect incremental risk and indicate myocardial injury, consensus documents recommend that the normal range of troponin be set at the 99th percentile of a normal healthy population. Furthermore, recommendations from the IFCC Working Group on Standardization of Cardiac Markers state the total imprecision should be less than 10% at the 99th percentile, the logic being that failure the logic being that failure of this goal could increase the risk of reporting misleading results that may prompt unnecessary confirmatory testing or lead to clinical inaction which 
or lead to clinical inaction when inappropriately low concentrations are reported. Because of this last recommendation, manufacturers must now provide precision must now provide precision information on the package insert, and it has become clear that many commercial troponin assays are unable to achieve this acceptable level of precision. The precision also varies by specimen type and platform within the same manufacturer, as the larger instruments generally, better have, generally have better analytical characteristics. Most healthy normal individuals are then below the limit of quantitation and the lack of precision limits the ability to detect and define significant elevations in troponin at the low end of the range. Clinical laboratories should carefully consider the effect of imprecision on clinical decision making when implementing or choosing a new troponin assay. Use of a serial sampling strategy allows for differentiation of an acute infarction versus chronic troponin elevation. There is no absolute agreement about the timing of serial samples. Cardiology guidelines recommend baseline and six-hour samples, with a 12-hour sample drawn in patients with a high suspicion or risk of MI. The International Federation of Clinical Chemistry recommends zero, four, eight, and 12-hour samples, although it is widely recognized that baseline in either a four or six hour sample will be sufficient for rule in, rule out purposes, depending on the assay and cutoffs used. Biological variation, both short term and long term variation, may influence serial sampling as well. There is currently a lack of clear definition of the criteria which defines what a significant change really is. It is important to remember that an elevated concentration of troponin in the blood only signals myocardial damage has occurred and does not indicate the cause of damage. A variety of conditions may induce myocardial damage besides ischemia and are listed in this table. In the past, there has been controversy over which biomarker is preferable, troponin I or T. There is no scientific evidence that either of these markers is superior to the other. Therefore, focus should be placed more on the analytic and clinical performance of the assay rather than which troponin is being tested. There is no way to correlate results from a troponin I assay to troponin T assay and often even between troponin I assays themselves. A major issue for troponin I assays is the lack of standardization among commercial assays and harmonization of troponin I is an ongoing area of effort. In terms of risk stratification, troponin T or I may be utilized, but it is clear that it is predominantly the use of a high sensitive assay that has benefit over contemporary assays. There is an increased prevalence of troponin T elevations in the setting of renal failure, and these are not to be considered false positives, but related to overall dysfunction in the cardiorenal system. Patients with a chronic low-level elevation of troponin have a worse prognosis and increased mortality. Another question which often arises is if CKMB is even, is even needed anymore. It is well recognized and accepted that it does not provide any additional information over troponin, even in the setting of suspected reinfarction, which is increasingly rare today, assessing infarct size before or after percutaneous coronary intervention or in end-stage renal disease patients. The only time CKMB needs to be ordered is if there are suspicious false positive troponin T or I results, although these can usually be resolved with heterophile blocking tubes or dilution studies, or if troponin testing is simply unavailable. In the United States, Medicare does not reimburse troponin and CKMB testing, which is performed simultaneously. Point-of-care cardiac marker testing is also an area that is commonly debated. The National Academy of Clinical Biochemistry guidelines recommend that the turnaround time for troponin be less than one hour over 90% of the time. Ideally, the turnaround time would be less than 30 minutes, and timing is defined from collection to reporting. If point-of-care testing is used, the results should be quantitative, and the analytical characteristics of the point-of-care test should be identical to the central lab's troponin assay. Currently, there are no point-of-care methods that have acceptable analytical sensitivity, 
and it is often argued that the turnaround time is essentially sacrificed for a lower quality result. At the forefront of discussion is development of high sensitivity troponin assays. The definition of a high sensitive assay would be one that has a total imprecision of less than 10% at the 99th percentile and some would propose also being able to quantitate over 50% of normal values below that 99th percentile. Although in the United States there are no FDA approved high sensitive assays, there are many in development and being used for research use only. Several other high sensitive troponin assays are already in use worldwide. Their use has been shown to diagnose myocardial infarction earlier, provide greater prediction of death or future MI, and yield an improvement in risk stratification. It should be noted that the improvement in sensitivity is at the expense of specificity. So how sensitive does troponin testing really need to be today? Essentially, troponin assays need to diagnose patients with acute myocardial infarction as early as possible and identify patients who are at risk of premature death from cardiovascular disease. To do this as accurately as possible, the assays do require an acceptable precision within the normal range. There are several key points to remember about troponin. First, a single troponin result does not equal a diagnosis. Acute changes in troponin are essential for interpretation and diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction, particularly with use of high-sensitive troponin assays. Point-of-care testing for troponin has not achieved the same level of precision or sensitivity as highly automated methods and remains an area for improvement. Finally, the precision of troponin assays will continue to improve and introduction of high-sensitivity assays may allow for earlier diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction and better risk stratification for our patients.